The vast majority of sharks in the oceans today are carnivorous meat-eaters, typically fulfilling a predatory role, usually as apex predators within their food chains. The strongest association we have with sharks and their feeding habits tends to be as solitary territorial hunters. However, it is not unheard of for sharks to engage in pack hunting to help secure this spot on the top step. This video was written not by me or Ben, but by Emily Baldock, a very good friend of mine who I met at university. Emily took her degree in marine biology and oceanography and very kindly offered to help us with this video. She currently has an Etsy shop open with some wonderful and completely adorable creations, so please do go and check that out to show your appreciation and also because it's just really great. Look at that thing. Emily also stars in our upcoming film, The Traveller, written and directed by me, El Bogle and Josh Newby, with Ben on the wider production team. It's a low-budget, independent drama with a cosmic horror twist wrapped throughout, and we're very excited to share more details about that with you in the future. Right then, back to sharks. So why do sharks need to hunt in a pack? They have plenty of weapons in their metaphorical arsenal to use against much of what they hope to eat. The sheer size alone of some sharks is enough advantage over their prey, but they can also call upon other advantages like their keen sense of smell and pores along their snouts called ampullae of Lorenzini, which detect electrical impulses that can be caused by the movement of other creatures, plus the lateral lines that run along their bodies which also detect changes in water pressure caused by other creatures swimming. However, pack hunting has been observed in a great number of different shark species as it allows smaller sharks to hunt bigger prey and increases their overall chances of a successful hunt. Predation efficiency in sharks is often lower than one might assume, with even the great white shark, one of the largest shark species, only having an average hunting success rate of around 48%. It has been discovered over recent years that great white sharks have more social interactions among their species than was previously thought. Not only do great whites appear to have preferences for certain individuals, grouping together in what scientists have referred to as gangs, but there is compelling evidence that great whites hunt together. While patrolling for prey, great whites sometimes seek each other out and remain together for up to 70 minutes at a time whilst hunting seals. Observed behaviours include following each other to find food, taking turns to patrol for food and feeding from the same kills. These sharks come together to share food resources and hunting knowledge rather than competing with one another. This social learning enables them to maximise their food intake and minimise the amount of effort needed with these complex social bonds that they form and maintain throughout their lives. But biologists share the understanding that complex cooperation is not necessarily required to achieve the advantages of hunting in a group. Despite the lack of a strong or rigid social structure and being a so-called primitive species that has remained unchanged for 150 million years, sharks still utilise collective behaviour using their own simple rules that benefit them. For example, the seven gill shark has also been proven to be both a solitary and a social hunter. As a pack, seven gill sharks can hunt a much broader spectrum of prey resources. The stimuli for a pack's assemblage is unknown, but seven gills in South African waters have been observed hunting socially, allowing them to prey on South African fur seals. The sharks gather in a loose circle formation around their prey, closing in as the seal tries to escape. A feeding frenzy begins when one or more sharks start to bite at the seal and the pack of sharks devour their own share of food. This pack hunting technique has also been observed when hunting other large prey, including some cetaceans, bat rays and spotted gully sharks. It is suggested that some form of communication occurs between seven gill sharks when hunting socially due to the reactive way individuals change their own behaviour. To put it simply, when one shark in the pack becomes excited and aggressive, so do the rest. This application of pack hunting in sharks is more of an opportunistic relationship, which is also seen among grey reef and white tip reef sharks at the Fakarava Atoll in French Polynesia. Cooperation is minimal and there is no sharing of food resources. The shark that catches the fish gets to eat it. 
In this pack hunting dynamic, grey reef sharks exploit the abilities of white tip reef sharks to improve their own predation efficiency. White tip reef sharks are much smaller and slimmer than grey reef sharks, able to manoeuvre in and around hidden crevices of coral reefs to seek out hiding prey. Grey reef sharks have been observed following foraging white tip reef sharks and waiting to catch the prey they chase out from its hiding place within the coral reef. It seems as though grey reef sharks have learned to take advantage of a white tip reef shark's hunting skill set in order to access other prey resources. This awesome type of behaviour is known as kleptoparasitism. Researchers studying this phenomenon found that while 29% of all hunts resulted in prey escaping, 36% resulted in a grey reef shark stealing the uncovered prey from a white tip reef shark. 16% of hunts resulted in an accidental sharing of the targeted prey, with both shark species taking a bite. 13% of hunts resulted in white tip reef shark success with the grey reef shark failing to seal the prey. The remaining 6% of hunts resulted in a grey reef shark consuming a different fish to one being targeted by the white tip reef shark. There is an obvious advantage from the research as to why grey reef sharks continue to display this hunting behaviour and that lies in the 25% increase of predation efficiency. This particular case of shark pack hunting provides insight into the future of our oceans. The Fakarava Atoll is considered a pristine ecosystem where shark population density is high and so, while this behaviour may seem new and unusual to us, it may actually be a more natural, instinct-driven phenomenon that a reduced population density simply doesn't present the opportunity for. The researchers of this particular study estimate that changes to this interactive behaviour could have drastic and cascading efforts on the wider food web. So, pack hunting in sharks can often be a lot more complex than it might at first seem, and their social behaviour is subtle and fascinating. A lot of research has gone into what we've talked about in this video, and doubtless more studies in the future will shed further light onto these fascinating creatures that never fail to captivate us. I hope you found this topic as fascinating as we have, and do let us know your thoughts below. As I mentioned before, this video was written by my friend Emily, and her rather brilliant Etsy shop will be linked below. Keep an eye out for more of Emily in our upcoming film The Traveller, we'll be sure to give you more information on that soon enough. If you enjoyed this video and think we deserve it, please do leave a like to show your support, and feel free to subscribe if you want to hear more from us. Over halfway through Shark Week this year, and we've still got some very exciting content for you lined up over the next few days, so keep an eye out, and we'll see you in the next video.